We are so excited to be here with you, but this is really about you. So yeah, we're gonna talk about passion. After all, I'm up here with my hunky husband. And we're gonna talk about purpose and how we get grounded. But first, I wanna know about you and who we're talking to. So, who here feels engaged at work? Okay, I would expect that, hopefully in this crowd. You're, you're here to better yourselves. <laughs> who beats the alarm clock up in the morning? Jumps out of bed, all right, morning people with me. Awesome. And who loves Mondays because it's the beginning of the work week? Okay, yes. so that one was less so. You saw my husband raise his hand every single time, and I'm there with him, and we're gonna tell you how we got there because it didn't always start that way. So let me take you on a little journey. 10 years ago, on our honeymoon, imagine you're at a beach, you don't have to close your eyes, but I'm gonna talk you through it because I like going there. So I'm on the beach, and I can feel the hot sun on my body. I feel my little sweat coming up. I can hear that beautiful crystal clear blue water crashing against the beach and feel that white perfect sand between my toes. I've got my cold drink in my hand, and boy was I ready for that drink. If you're anything like my husband, it's pink or purple and frothy and has an umbrella. <laughs> and then I'm reading my cheesy romance novel. And don't judge me, guys. It was my honeymoon, okay? So I'm sitting there, and I'm reading my book, and I'm feeling the moment. And I'm like, man, I've made good decisions in my life to get where I'm at. And I turn and look at the love in my life, and he says to me, Hey, honey, I think I'm going to quit my job when we get back. Oh, okay. And uh, what do you want to do? Um, something in cheese. Cheese? Okay, so yeah, at this point, I had just married a man with a stable income. He was a CPA by trade, certified public accountant. Not the most exciting job, and I don't know what something in cheese meant, but this was the beginning of our journey. And so, I was sitting there reading a teen sci-fi book. It was pretty spectacular, and having a very introspective... Don't judge our literary choices, okay, guys? <laughs> and I was having an introspective moment. I thought to myself, you know, I had the perfect wedding. I have an incredible wife, got two awesome dogs at home, great house, live in an amazing city, Austin, Texas. Austin, Texas! Yeah. Just not fulfilled at work. And so I, I looked, leaned over to her and I said, okay, honey, can I have two years, basically the equivalent of an MBA program, the same amount of debt to go searching for my passion? And if I don't, I'll go back to being a CPA. And what that led us on was a two-year journey in search of, a, a, ultimately, a higher purpose. And what we're going to share with you today are the steps that we took to go from ho-hum work to a fulfilled life. Okay, so maybe let me rephrase those beginning questions. Who feels passionate about their work every day? So All right, well, something to work with. All right, for the rest of you, have you felt passionate about something in your life? It could be running. <laughs> Maybe community service. Knitting. Who's out there knitting Somebody's right knitting now? Right right now. Somebody's knitting. Yeah. <laughs> Take a minute to think back at times in your life when you're very passionate, and use that. Think about the cues, the clues that were left behind. Were you gaining energy while doing that activity? Were you smiling more? Were you breaking into spontaneous high fives, or saying awesome all the time like I do? Uh, those are the types of things to look for. And so our first step. Beyond passion is to benchmark. And benchmarking is what we like to talk about is finding a moment in your life, a baseline of where you were most passionate, where you had those feelings. Because how are we gonna know that you got there if you don't know what it feels like? And so I spent some time looking back, being reflective. I like to say that you need to look back in order to move forward sometimes. And so I look back at my time at Georgetown University, where we met. Oh, yes, that's, a, that's the beginning of our love story, right. guys. <laughs> was a time in my life where I was very passionate. I was, uh, my junior and senior year had a high GPA. I planned three to four campus-wide events a year. I was the chairman of the largest student-run company in the country. I was holding down a business intern. All right, all right. Blah, blah, okay, we blah. get the point. And if you think it was about all work and no play, don't worry. Our names are on the college bar on the wall. So we can prove to our kids sometime, someday, it's about work just, uh, and play and that life balance. But really, it's about making work play. And that's right. And so I don't look back at that time with nostalgia or sadness. I was working my booty off. And well, what was amazing is that I'd wake up in the morning and I'd have more energy at night after 18 hours of straight work 
than I did when I got out of bed. And that was the thing that I wanted most of all, to plant my feet on the ground before the alarm went off and be excited to go do what I was gonna go do. If I was gonna spend the next 60 years of my life working, it was gonna be towards something fulfilling. So I benchmarked that moment. Again, you need to know what it feels like for you, we're all individuals, so that you know when you get there. So you've got these passions swirling around your head right now. So for instance, maybe it's soccer. Well, I wanna question you, is it really soccer, this general umbrella, or is it that you love that team spirit and you making the pass to somebody right before they make the goal? Or is it that you love that athletic feat of endurance and really pushing yourself? What specifically about your passions do you love? What do you like that it makes you feel? So the alignment phase is our exploration phase. And at this moment, this is still John's journey. I'm doing my thing and I'm watching him go through it, but we're married now, and so it's dragging me along with him. So this exploration phase for us took on the form of a grilled cheese club out of our house, where we started inviting 20 strangers into our house while we made some grilled cheeses. Delicious. Uh, it turned into, you went and interned in France. You end at a 24-hour diner here. Um, we we 50 pounds of bacon a day, not one of my passions. The great thing about the exploration process is you can actually X off a lot of things. I did not want to sleep next to a man who smelled like bacon all night long. So we got to X out that big restaurant life, but we also traveled. And then really it became about this love of food and together. And all of a sudden, the best thing about exploring these passions for John that is where I came into it. And so it really aligned the two of us that our passion was yes, food, but it was more so being together. And that's what we knew we wanted to do, is something in food where we were together. But what's the next step? Knowing your strengths. This is key, right? Because if you're gonna go to work every day, you need to know what you're good at. And the important part about that is, again, I've used energy a couple times already. I like a lot of energy. Your smiles are giving me plenty of it right now. But when you're working towards your strengths, things are easier. You gain energy from them. We teach that in our business. These are the types of things that we need to find out about ourselves. And this is a really hard question. It's an interview question 101 in business school. I could never answer it. I had no idea. Um, until Kendall and I reframed the question. And what we asked ourselves is, when are we at our best? So now, hold on to your seats. This is going to be earth shattering. We are at our best when we're eating. Talking. And when we're together. And so these are the types of things Okay, you very guys, nobody simple. else doesn't think that that's a strength. I mean, usually we're told eating is not a strength unless you're a competitive eater. <laughs> but for us, we reframed it and put it in our own language. So eating is really about that shared communal experience of slowing down, enjoying life, being around the table together and that proverbial breaking bread. Talking is the fact that we love being with people. I get energy out of my day about being with you, not behind, about being behind a computer screen. So yeah, we did some assessing of our strengths, but really put it into our own language. It's about eating and talking and being together. All right. So the, the next step along the process is mirroring. And what we mean by this is at some point you have to have a reflection in the mirror of yourself in a future time. And we don't want you to reinvent the wheel. Once you understand what passion feels like to you, once you've aligned some of your daily activities to meet that lifestyle goal of yours, and once you've understood your strengths, now what you can do is go out and look for people that inspire you, or companies. What we did, we made a list of people that inspired us, and we had to be specific. What was it about them that inspired us? And so you're looking for things like, maybe it was their philanthropic giving, or maybe it was their work ethic. Maybe you're jealous that somebody else gets out at two every day, but the chances are you can try that on in the mirror, and you can probably have that too if you just work to make it your own. That's right, and so mirroring, People have made so many mistakes before us, let's not make our own. Let's use them and be inspired by them. Use them as a blueprint. They'll become guideposts for you along your own trajectory. And that's what's really important here, is it's your own trajectory. And so take the time to mirror other people. In fact, a couple weeks after we got back from our honeymoon, I was reading a, a newspaper, uh, Austin Chronicle, a local one here, and in it was an article entitled, The Cheese Queen of Austin or something like that. And I thought to myself, man, if that was me, that would be awesome. That would be incredible. And lo and behold, she was the president of the American Cheese Society at the time, which we didn't know that was a thing. And here, John tried it on for size, looked in the mirror, let it reflect back on him. And here, eight years later, my husband is the president of the American Cheese Society. <laughs> Cheese at the time. So you've done all this work.
work, you've got your passions are swirling, you've benchmarked, you want to know how you want to feel, you've done your strengths assessment, you want to emulate somebody. But for us, that was like, okay, we like eating and talking and being together, but how am I going to get you to pay me $5 to do it, right? i got to put this in a business plan and make it solvent somehow. And that's where purpose comes in. And purpose plays two big roles. One, it gives the whole why for you, why you guys should support us and how we're going to get community support and strength and leverage. But two, it gives us our why and our perspective about how to keep going because entrepreneurship is tough and it is challenging and it has kept us up more nights than our two toddlers at home combined. But passion gives you fuel. When the going gets tough, you're passionate about it so you can keep going forever. John working those 18 hour days, he was passionate so he could keep going. You need your purpose and that's your perspective. That's that point on the horizon that you know why you're going for it and you know why it's all for and why people wanna come in and support you for it. So that is your passion with your purpose. Okay, so you're us, you're a year in, you've done all this work and we've put it in a business plan and now we're ready to go for it. And then um, we do some more work and we need to research some more and we need to keep teaching ourselves how we're gonna do this better in life, I don't know. Okay, let's have a glass of wine and slow down. So my mother is in town and she's with us and we're all sharing a glass of wine and yes, we realize beverages come up a few times in our story. Um, and so we're just taking this moment and she says, but when are you gonna start this journey? When are you gonna start the business? And we said, well, there's always more we could do and it's risky. And she looked at us and she said, business is risk. And it was that moment when we were like, yep, that's it, pull off the band-aid. And the next day we started looking for locations for our brick and mortar. So where that comes down to is we're skipping a big phase and writing that business plan, but you need to commit and go for it and pull the band-aid, all right? And then the next two years, Passion with purpose is gonna get you through those and all those sleepless nights and that excitement, but that's what's gonna get you there. So I'm gonna fast forward because the work is not done. You've opened your business or you're living life daily with passion and purpose and it is awesome and we're loving it. But what do you do from there? What keeps you going? It's time to realign. This is the last step of the process for us and what we've reflected on since going through it three different times. Realigning means that you know our lives change, we evolve. All the things happen. And so you need to be adaptable and you need to come back to this process multiple times. As I said, we've done it three times. The first one was kind of forced. We, um, yeah, we were expecting our first child two years into the business. And one of our core principles is family first then business. And so in order to live that out, we need to make a dramatic change. Cheesemongering is awesome and it is amazing, but it doesn't allow you to raise a child. And so we, made a decision, a very active decision, to create desk jobs where we could work from home, or we could be a little bit more flexible. Yeah, and we did that for two years. That was our first alignment, realignment. Our second one came two years later where we realized, well, now we have two toddlers, they run around a lot, and we're losing energy every day because we're behind a desk, not one of our strengths. So we had a deep conversation, we talked about what's our next role. Uh, next steps, and we decided to send Kendall out into the community. Get me out with the yeah, people! In a sales and marketing Let's role. eat some cheese! Cheese and talking people! That's what we're That's here what for! We're at. And so Kendall got to go out in the community, share some of what we do as a business, and talk about passion with purpose, and she was thriving. And I got an awesome viewpoint of that from behind my computer still. <laughs> Not awesome. And it wasn't until this last December that we came back and realigned for the third time. And I'm, I'm actually really happy to say that y'all are a part of it. This is the first time that we're getting to speak as a couple. Now, talking and being together. If only back we could figure out with how you to today. eat Thanks, in front of you while doing it, life would be fantastic. Nobody wants cheesy. to see us eat up here or some cheese in. Um, and so you've got to come back and check in. Make sure your trajectory is where you want it to be. All right, quickly, let's put all your homework together. What are they going to do, John? First. Benchmark, you've got to know what passion feels like to you. Then align, make sure that your daily activities are starting to move in the direction of your lifestyle. Then do a strengths assessment. Know what you're best at and when you're at your best. Then we want you to mirror, find inspiration. There's lots of it in the room right here. Then we want you to commit and finally come back to it often. Realign, because if you don't, you'll come off trajectory. And in fact, it was in that last alignment per process when we figured out our mission. And we had always talked about a certain passion and purpose, but our mission was do good, eat good. And we went back and said, what are the core principles we've been doing and living our lives by all, innately all along, and how can we create a culture of this and train it? And it became, what was number one? Passion. 
passion with purpose. It's what we teach our team every day. If they don't have both of those things in their job, it's not worth it and they should walk out. Two, be a juggernaut and all of awesome, an overwhelming force. Three, improve every day. Four, be true to ourselves and to others. And five, family first in business. And if we can't follow those things, then it's not worth doing. So where do we bring it all around to? Were we passionate about cheese? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Just get us out of party and we'll talk cheese forever. And was our purpose to tell the story of artisanal food, linking consumers with producers, and, and hopefully creating an honor to this past of traditional food making? Definitely. Yeah, that was our purpose. But it was only through realignment that we came back to discover that our true passion is being together and our true purpose is to spread joy. So the exciting thing is that cheese is just the vehicle through which we can do that. And now that we understand that overarching umbrella, the world is our oyster. There's so many things we can do that we could do together and to spread joy and make people happy. So I hope you can take some of these steps home with you so that you too, just like us, can live a life of passion with purpose. Thanks, guys.